On the agenda tonight, we're going back to early last year to take a look at Tears for Fears, and they're going to be performing Everybody Wants to Rule the World. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we'll get the guys up on screen and I mean, just what a classic track by the way, but I think I know why this particular song or performance has been requested and this is coming from Sirius XM and it is labelled as a live performance. So we'll jump into this and see what's going on. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here and if you want to watch this the whole way through without me interrupting it there's a link in the description below as always but getting into this what I have seen in the comments section recently uh, are people that are saying about watching particular videos or particular performances that they're now starting to be able to hear pitch correction and auto-tune but pitch correction I think is probably what's being used here even though I've just kind of given it away but if I take it back actually in the beginning the, the synth you know that the pitch monitoring software has actually picked up it thinks that that's a voice so that's why it's um, planting it on the A4 precisely but as we kind of go our way we'll make our way through and I'll just take out the accompaniment and you can listen here to the lead vocal Welcome to your life, there's no turning back, even while we're sleeping. And again, with the pitch corrected vocals, I mean, it's great that some people are now starting to develop their ear to be able to hear 440 hertz, which is good for the, the videos, but also... I think it's important that when you're listening to any song and, and any singer that you know what you're listening to uh, because that's really how life works with anything that you're buying if you're buying music you want to know what it is so I know I know that we've got the pitch monitoring software up on screen and I do that so that you can see it so when we're looking at these pitch corrected vocals it means that the a3 you know we're right over the line here with the vibrato, because there is vibrato here, but um, here, you know, bang on the line, and we're, you know, just bang on the line there. Let me just take it back, because when you start seeing this kind of thing, again, bang on the line, bang on the line here, on the line, on the line, you know, just perfectly stopping on the line, we start to see this sequence, and if you've seen a lot of my videos, you, you'll start to recognize these sequences where a vocalist is hitting lines all the time, and sometimes with the pitch corrected vocals that are not as obviously pitch corrected they're still hitting lines quite regularly and thinking about videos recently the Morissette Amon video that we looked at where she's got an amazing voice and she was on one of these lines once in like a four or five minute performance so generally with a great singer they've got emotion in their voice so they're going to be missing these lines so yeah I mean especially when you listen to this isolated vocal it really does unfortunately now stand out Welcome to your life. 
Because I think it is the case that the consonants of the words, it almost turns into it's like making a computer voice out of a human voice. So you're kind of losing the words because now it's more about pitch than the lyrical content. That That's all the software is worried about. It's not worried about the words that are being said. It's making sure that you're hitting exactly on a B3. So that's where, yeah, sometimes just the sound of the vocal is different. We are going to jump back into it because, you know, it's a great song and we're going to listen to the original release so that we can compare that with this live performance. And again, it's up to you whether you call a vocal that's then post-produced and pitch corrected the actual live vocal because that's not how it would have sounded. But uh, this is where we are in the modern day that even on shows like Sirius XM or the YouTube channel where they're very much shown to be live performances. They are very post-produced. I mean, you can tell that, that this sounds like a studio release because it is so well produced. So yeah, it's, it's certainly been uh, treated with care in every aspect, but it, interestingly, it's only the vocals that get pitch corrected and we'll listen on because you'll be able to tell that with, with the other instrumentation. I mean, on some of those runs, it is borderline auto-tune, actually, uh, the, the way that it does sound, because generally when you're listening to a singer descend and hit notes, they're never right at 440 hertz, 440 hertz, 440 hertz, 440 hertz, going up slightly sharp, but then we do have a little notch there on 440 hertz. So yeah, and when I say 440 hertz, that's what pitch correction is ca calibrated to, so the human voice doesn't really follow that. And I would say actually that Kurt Smith's lead vocal here makes it sound less like him. When you hear the original in your head, like I know that there are bits where he's definitely not going to be, you know, perfectly tuned like an instrument is, but that's part of his voice. That's part of his expression. And that's actually what makes the song. And, and this is why when you think about songs back in the 80s and 90s and before that 70s, 60s, the vocalists had a very particular personality that you heard in their voice. And I would say that Kurt's voice falls within that bracket, that he wasn't just trying to hit notes, you know, for, for the sake of hitting notes. He was singing with the lyrical content and the emotion of what he's singing about in mind while he was singing. So it's more about just hearing his personality within his voice. But obviously that's been... Uh, a little bit taken out here, but we will um, just move it forward to where we were. And it looks like we're going to be picking up a little bit of that synth voice <laughs> here as well. I mean, the good thing that this does is it shows you this is a keyboard that's being played. So it means it is tuned to 440 hertz. So this is why this is perfectly on the A4 because we're looking at a tuned instrument here. So when we go back and look at the voice, this is why it makes all of this kind of look a little bit silly down at the bottom here and here and here and here because it's now making the human voice into a keyboard because th that's all it's doing is it's tuning the human voice to a keyboard. I think we'll just listen to um, this last section because we have a bit of guitar solo in here. So any excuse to hear a little bit of uh, lead guitar.
I mean, we've got a silky smooth, buttery tone here. But just saying about the instruments not being pitch corrected, you can see how the guitar has the freedom to go down through the uh, F sharp four and then up, you know, control of vibrato here as well. But yeah, why take this expression out of the voice? Like the main thing that we're looking at for expression in any performance that has vocals <laughs> are the vocals. So why take that out, but leave it in for the guitar? So yeah, it is a bit of a contradiction really. And there we have it. Again, the pitch monitoring software picked up that last note with the guitar and the vibrato going on. And you can see actually where well, you could hear how sharp that last note was. So again, you would say that, it, why not pitch correct that? You've done it with the whole vocal. So why not take that guitar and put it over the E4 where it should have really been, but I mean, well, listen to that last note again, because listen to how the note is sharp, but more importantly, see how it makes you feel. It, it might make you feel a little bit edgy or a little bit awkward because of where the note is, but this is what being sharp and flat does. It gives you a slightly different emotion to just being directly over 440 hertz. <laughs> It's almost like, uh, you know, it's, uh, I mean, here we are actually closer to the F4 than the E4. So yeah, we're technically quite a lot, I mean, off pitch there. But this is the thing when you're playing an instrument like a guitar or any stringed instrument, you've got this freedom. So now we're going to be jumping into the original release just to see where Kurt's voice falls and for those of you that are really interested in frequencies and tunings, with this, I have calibrated the pitch monitoring software down to 430 hertz because this original doesn't sit at 440 hertz. It will be between the lines. So I want to have some kind of relevance to the performance that we've just watched, which was tuned to 440 hertz, hence why the vocals were stuck to the lines. So now I've calibrated it so that we can at least see where Kurt's vocal would have sat in relation to these lines you know, if it had been pitch corrected, it would have been on these lines. So now we can look back in time and see exactly where his voice landed. But let's have a listen. And I'm just thinking, when I said about the production on the live performance, this synth sound of the voices or a voice being a bit high in the mix, the guitar is definitely quite high in the mix here as well, just being another focal point, almost at the same level as this sound. So yes, I stand by what I said uh, for that uh, live mix that we heard. This is definitely kind of less in your face. have it. I mean, that's really proving my point about Kurt's voice, that when he comes in, he's clearly sharp of the C4. So he's going, nah, he should be coming in there. But he's coming in, he's coming in slightly above where he should be. But that's the point, that it's his voice. So this is naturally where his voice has gone. Therefore, we get his personality in the voice. It hasn't been put through something that everybody else's voice has been put through. This is, I mean, this is great.
even hear sharp, there's no, sharp of the C4, and then back, that's flat of the A sharp 3. So, and up here, we have got exactly on the G4, which is great, because, you know, we're not hitting lines all the time, we're getting so much variation in the vocal, that's giving it so much personality. And, I mean, I love it when this kind of thing happens where it's literally between the lines, not that you really notice it, but when we're looking at this vocal, there are points at which, yeah, okay, we're a little bit flat here, but, you know, you could say that, oh, you know, we're pretty much spot on there, even though if you're being really strict, we go a little bit up to the line. But when I say about great singers and singers that have great pitch they can hit these lines you know now and again it's always you know the killer when we zoom into it that you start to see this kind of thing what looked like it was directly over the line as would have been pitch correction is actually not and i mean here i mean that really does show it but here again looking at this close up we know from pitch correction when we've zoomed in that it's just always on the line because it is 440 hertz but when you zoom in on a natural voice is very rarely ever overlapping this line perfectly. So when we go back and we zoom out, then it looks like it from this distance, but yeah, we know that this is a natural voice, so it's not gonna be happening. And this is the low, that would have been the D sharp three. Were we a little bit flat? Again, it's kind of... Oh no, actually it should have been the D3, we're sharp. So, we're actually probably closer at the end of this to the other note, like the semitone above. But I would say that this is probably one of the main reasons why songs stand out. And songs that were made 30, 40, 50 years ago, why they stand out in your mind is because this is happening. It was a person's voice. It was a person telling a story and that story wasn't being manipulated by anything. You just got to appreciate it for what it was. And therefore you hear the personality of the vocalist. So every singer who isn't pitch corrected has a personality that is unique because everybody's different and this is the thing about Kurt's voice he's not intentionally trying to hit exactly between notes here it's just what happens to his voice at this particular moment in time with this particular you know set of words and the expression within the words that he's finding while he's singing so this is why every singer who's not pitch corrected has a unique personality everyone that is pitch corrected has the same personality, but may, it's just that their tone is different and their vibrato might be slightly faster or slightly slower, but it's always the same because it's coming out of the, it's almost like coming out of a conveyor belt of a factory that it's all producing the same thing over and over and over again. Back here in the studio, the, the, the there wasn't a conveyor belt. Everybody was different coming out of this, you know, <laughs> yeah, the music factory, everybody, looked different and they sounded different. So yeah, that's what was great. And this is, yeah, like I've said, why it sticks out and songs seem to be different. And you almost have a, a deeper emotional connection with the older songs because it was the person's personality we were listening to and it was unfiltered. So yeah, it's great that there'll be so many songs. I could do thousands of songs and analyze thousands of songs that are like this, of the the biggest hits of all time, I guarantee you, were doing this all the time, because it was the personality of the singer. Live performances now, for some reason, are being so post-produced, it's like they're trying to make them sound exactly like the original record, but in this case, because the original record wasn't pitch corrected, it doesn't sound like the original record, because you, you kind of want to hear Kurt's voice just not being really accurate. I mean, I'd love to hear it, like the actual vocal from the live performance, because I think 
genuine fans want to hear the voice, you know, warts and all. If it isn't, you know, perfectly in tune, people, you know, can at least lock into that and, you know, appreciate it for the art that it is. Because then, I mean, it is genuinely more artistically credible to give you something that is just a person and it is what it is. Uh, it, it, you know, that's what art's all about. Thank you guys for requesting this particular video for me to take a look at the, the live session performance. I thought I'd compare it to the original just to give you that reference point as I do like to do that. So yeah, keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!